for another class, but they're going to come in quietly and join us after the quiz. Um, thanks for coming. And this is uh, AP Politics uh, School Board, Athens School Board Forum. There are three candidates running for this race, and there's two seats available. And I'm going to introduce their names, and they're going to have a quick uh, introduction, who they are, and as far as their experience, and why they are running for the Afton School Board, which the election will be this coming Tuesday, which is April 5th, okay? Um, so your parents, okay, inform your parents about this election, because usually in a Afton or a school board election, it's a very low turnout. So I want you guys to encourage your parents to vote, and probably they're going to listen to you since you have the experience and you're more and probably more informed than them as far which candidate is the best for our district you guys have any questions before we move on okay um be respectful um listen to each candidate's voice and uh i hope you guys have fun so uh we're gonna start with you mr mcneil could you just have a brief introduction who you are your experience and why are you running for the school board again Okay, and I'm assuming everybody can see me because I am looking at a brick wall. Is there any way for me to see the students or is that not really possible? Um, hold on. Can they? Move that there. Could you see? Oh, it's on the, uh, it's on the laptop. Okay, so hold on. We'll get, we'll get it. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. It's, it's, not, it's not in <laughs> crisis. Oh. 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 He's still there. He's still there on the laptop. He's just not on the screen. Now what happened? Go ahead, go ahead and continue. Stay where you're at. Go ahead and continue. That's okay. The um, so I've been uh, so my name is Michael McNeil. Um, I had three kids that graduated from Afton High School uh, in 2010 and 2012. Um, been involved in various uh, things in the district, but um, most importantly, relative to this. I've been on the school board for uh, almost a decade now, and uh, I am continuing to run. My intention is to run one more term uh, to help put in, uh, I guess I would say, to continue the, the growth that we've seen. Um, I've been really excited that uh, when, I, when I joined the board, the expectation for graduates of Afton High School are different than they are today. And I'm really excited about the fact that our top students now are going to the top schools in the country. And uh, our, our top tier of students have opportunities that, uh, frankly, my kids didn't have. And I'm really excited about that. I always uh, like to see that kind of growth. And uh, I hope you guys have some great opportunities in your future. And really want to uh, put into concrete some of the good things that we've done uh, the last nine years. So that's why, that is the, the reason why I'm running. Tony, I couldn't hear everything. Were there other aspects of what you wanted me to address You're good. in the introduction? You're good. Did you hear me? Yeah. You're fine. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, Mr. Williams, yes, could you open the I guess I'll stand it's up. It's up to you. I'll stand up. Mike, we can't see you, but it's Jordan. How are you doing? Doing pretty well. All right. <laughs> Out here in cloudy California. Fine. Could be better than here, I guess. Uh, my name is Jordan Levinson. Uh, I've lived in the school district for going on my 10th year now. I have three kids who are in the school system right now. My oldest is 11. She's a sixth grader over at, I guess that'd be Rogers. And then I have a nine year old over at Gotch and an eight year old over at Main Year. Uh, I work as a fireman paramedic with the Afton Fire Protection District. And uh, that's a little bit about myself, and my wife, and she made sure I dressed appropriately for this today. So I hope that shows. Um, my interest uh, for joining the school board is, is not to necessarily make any major changes. I mean, of course, changes are good. Changes are really good. The current school board that we have right now is an amazing dedicated group of citizens who have volunteered their time and their energy and their efforts to make what all the students from the high school all the way down to, to the early childhood center uh, to have the best options available. The only thing that they are lacking in my opinion, and again, this is solely my opinion, is, is that nobody has kids actually in the school system right now. And that's what I'm looking to offer 
for the school district by becoming a member of the school board. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get up for no, I'm, I'm a relaxed Can I sit next to you? You can sit down. All right. Sorry, yes, <laughs> I'm not going to stand up. I'm a relaxed guy, kind of like you guys. I just like to chill. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'm actually an alumni from Afton. I graduated back in the days. So I won't tell you what year, but uh, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, I didn't have any kids that actually went to the district, but I've been involved in the district for many, many years. Actually, 40 years in a floor hockey program, which a couple of you have played in. And uh, I think they actually gave me a celebration and gave me a hockey jersey with the number 40 on it, which was kind of fantastic. I enjoyed it. I mean, it just surprised the heck out of me. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm an alumni. Uh, I'm involved in the parents club. You'll see me at football games up at the concession stand. You know, I'll come to different events, different sporting events every once in a while here and there. Uh, I was on the school board for four years, for like 2006, I think, through 2010. I got off for a personal reason, but uh, the school board that is put together, like uh, Jordan says, it is a great board, you know. And, and honestly, I hate to say it, but there's three of us that are really good at running, and I hate to see one of us lose. I mean, because any two of us that your parents would pick would be perfect for the school board. Uh, why I'm running uh, is basically for you kids, because uh, when I was on it before, we've done a lot of things, basically. I mean, you can see by the technology that you guys have now, which we didn't have a few years back. Uh, and that's what I want to see continue. And we want to make sure that you guys do have some of the best teachers around also. So that's basically why I'm here. Thank you, Tony. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. McNeil, can you see them better? We cannot see you, but can you see them? Oh, yeah, I can see them. Okay. And we can, okay, so we'll... Oh, you, can, so you can't see me, so I can't make faces at the kids, huh? Uh, or you could. You're lucky. <laughs> so, Actually, uh, they're lucky. <laughs> All right, so here's what we're going to do. If we have any questions from the audience, um, come up here so... Mr. McNeil could hear it. You could ask one of them, two of them, three of them. It's up to you. Um, so uh, I want to start with questions from my class. Who ever wants to go first? Don't be shy. Who's going first? Um, I have a question. You prepared a question. Wait, can you see me if I stand in front of that? Yes. Yeah. Right there. Right here? Yeah. Okay, so I answer for all three of you guys. Um, so what would you say is your main priority for the district of this coming year? Mm -hmm. Are you asking all of them? Yeah. Okay, Mr. McNeil, you want to start? Sure. Yeah, my primary priority is to continue to uh, improve the academics and, yes, even the rigor of the academics in the schools. Um, but with the goal in mind of, of creating opportunities for graduates of the high school. Um, and that does start, which starts in the early childhood. That's why we put that in place and uh, why we've been improving curriculum all throughout Manier, throughout Gotch, and uh, more recently an aggressive push in Rogers. And with the goal in mind of creating opportunities, and I, I want to continue to see that happen on the athletic side, a push for more interaction with the college level, getting more of our uh, mid-range athletes opportunities to participate at the college level. I know that has specifically increased in the last few years, which is a great thing to see. Um, also wanna see the fine arts program, which is really strong, be able to push forward with more opportunities at the college level. Um, and as well as the, the academic side, moving into uh, CN Project Lead the Way and other programs, a biomedical program press forward to its fruition, which is students graduating from Afton High School, getting a good degree, and then working in the field. I'm here at the, you know, right now I'm here at the Volkswagen Audi Engineering Research Laboratory doing consulting for two weeks, working with a whole bunch of engineers. Um, this is a neat field and it's a great opportunity for kids. To, to grow and do something they love, work on all, all kinds of interesting things with vehicles and autonomous vehicles. And it's great to see, and I want to see some Afton kids get that opportunity. Well, that's a hard act to follow. Yeah. Um, good, job. good job. You're doing good, even though we can't see you. 
Um, you know, the, honestly, I'll direct, just because she asked a question, I'm going to kind of direct her, but I'll answer for everybody. Um, you know, number one for me, I, it, a number one goal for me, I want to attain the position, obviously. That's, that's, a, that's a first for me so that I can become and start being uh, an active member of the decision-making process. Uh, it's hard for somebody who is not necessarily sitting on the board right now to know because whenever you have, let's say, an overall budget, uh, ideas in place, you don't necessarily, at least uh, in my experience, you don't necessarily make it for that coming year. Uh, what's happening next year has a lot of decisions that were made last year, maybe even the year before. But me, And so there's probably some amazing ones in place. What I would like to see, whether I'm on the board or not, I have kids that are in the school system. Um, something that, I, that my kids have uh, and that you young adults are having as well uh, that most of us parent-wise don't have is this technology difference. You know, these laptops that you guys have access to was, was a thing of just the future, you know, when we were growing up and going through the school system. Let's continue that. Um, something that I'm a little bit more familiar with is like over at the Manier School, uh, they have a 3D printer. I'm not sure if the high school has a 3D printer. I, 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 would, I would hope you guys also have access to that as well. Let's see maybe a little bit more emphasis around this technology. I think you're going to hear a common theme, especially with Mr. McNeil, who is very into technology. Mr. Alexander and myself, we're all for the technology. I mean, in my field, technology is changing daily. Um, and so I get to experience that myself. But what better place to start than in our school system? So my goal, whether I'm on or not, I want to make sure that the technology continues to increase. Because, as I said, it is a day-to-day -day thing. It will change every other day if you're not paying attention to that system. And it seems like the board right now and all the experience that I have is really staying attuned to that and making sure that the uh, availability is there for everybody to have a part of that. But maybe we need a little bit more. But it's hard for me to say that because I'm not sure really what the budget states because there's a whole lot of factors that go into all of that. It's easy for me to stand here and say, let's buy a hundred of these 3D printers. Now, I want that at my house to make a whole bunch of cool stuff and whatever, and my son would love it to make cars and whatever, but you know, reality, that may not be the factor, but to get the emphasis there and to possibly direct those budgets in that emphasis will allow our students to do exactly what Mr. McNeil is doing, sitting in a global position in a, well, he's in a parking lot, so it's not really global, but at a global <laughs> headquarters. Sorry, Mike. In a global in a global position, that's the opportunity that we, not just as a school board, but as parents want for our young adults growing up and moving into those fields. Hey, Mike. Mike? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Can you tell these kids what your son is going into, where he just got a job? Oh, yeah, he... Yeah, he's right in line with that, isn't he? Um, yeah, he's going into, my son, uh, Connor, that graduated in 2012, is graduating from Rose Holman with a mechanical engineering degree and uh, has got his dream job. He's going to work in a uh, design department at Honda at the plant where they make the new NSX. How's that for a dream job? I'm jealous. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> So no, I wanted them to hear that because I mean that's the thing. That's the kind of things we're looking forward to. That's I know that I'm piggybacking on Mike, but the, I mean that's the goal that him and I also have is to get you guys in the real world and get a job like that, which would be fantastic. I mean, any of you guys would love that job. Um, also, I mean that's why I like to see when they start to lead the way, which is perfect to try and get you guys to know what a real job is. You know, you can learn every year as a freshman and get into it and do it all four years, that way you're ready for the real world, you know, when you graduate, you know, hopefully get the job that you wanted, you know, that you want in the future. Um, I know sometimes I'm piggyback on you again too, but that's all right. But that's, that's one of the best goals that I'm, you know, and I want to make sure that you do have the right teachers in those positions to get you the right place. Okay. Any other questions? wanted to know uh, if you guys were elected what are some changes and what are some things that you would keep the same go ahead Mike we'll let you keep going 
Do I have? Yeah, you want me to go first? Sure. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> yes. The, uh, uh, first, I'll start with the things that I want to. I would love to keep the same, uh, and that is there. There are some obvious, uh, valuable. Uh, and there's some valuable instructional. I know, best way to say it is history. That's specifically uh, at the high school right now, where there are some teachers that that I can tell just from my kids and from other interactions with kids in the district now, that they're just really good at what they do. And I want to keep that, I want to preserve that, um, and if there's a way to bottle that and transfer that to the next generation of teachers, we want to do that. Um, so that's, that's kind of the culture that we want to continue to have in the district at many of the buildings. Um, some things that we, you know, I'd, I would love to see change um, sometimes we get in the habit at Afton of doing it a certain way because we've always done it that way. And I know you as students may not see that, um, but I, I really want us to challenge ourselves going forward that we don't just do it that way because we've always done it that way, but we do it that way because it's right for kids. It's right for you as students. Um, and it's, I think that's, that's something we can fall into, and so continuing to press that forward is, is important. Um, the other thing I'd like to keep the same is, I love it at graduation every year, the group stands up that's been together since kindergarten. I can't wait for the day when that first group stands up that's been together since the Early Childhood Center. I wanna keep that going, where, kid, where you guys have known some of your classmates your whole life almost. That's a valuable thing, and you don't understand what that's, that's like, unless you went to a huge high school like I did up, up in North County at Hazelwood, where you just, you just, you don't even know everybody in your own class, much less know everybody in the school. So that's, there's value in that, in that community. I want to keep that going as well. So Jordan, I'll pass it a bit on to you since I cannot see you. Hi, Mike. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I think you're going to see a, a, a bit of a trend um, this afternoon, um, and it's something that I call them the mics because I'm the oddball, but it's something that the mics and myself agree upon is that we are both very forward progressive thinking. We are very for the students, very for the teachers. It's going to be difficult to say maybe one of us are not able to do it, maybe just this time. Okay, so I wanted to put that out there, my support for, for both of these gentlemen. These answers are, are they're heartfelt and they're true. Um, for, for me myself, I'm gonna speak from, again, my personal experience. Uh, I have not been on the board before. Um, I was raised by teachers. Um, I'm from Webster Groves myself. Uh, so class-wise, school size is not too much different. Um, and something that uh, Mr. McNeil had spoken about is seeing that first group coming from the early childhood center, following all the way through to that graduation date. Well, I will be a part of that no matter what because my son was that first group that started at the early childhood center. Uh, he was actually in the picture digging with uh, Mr. Castellanos who is stepping down from the board. And I've got a picture of that and I can't wait to show that later on. So that is too a, a great thing to see for us um, in my family. Changes, changes are hard. Um, I know in my profession, uh, we're, we're a bit stubborn, if we will. Um, I'm not a behind the desk kind of person. I don't necessarily like the four walls around me and that stuff. I'm a thinker on my feet. I'm a hands-on kind of a person. And when change happens, uh, you're gonna get a lot of resistance. It, it's just nature. Whether it's good change or it's bad change, you're never gonna make everybody 100% happy. So the trick is gonna be to make sure that everybody has buy-in on that subject. And how do we do that? Um, because change I'm going to speak for not necessarily change something particular but change in general we need to get the students first and foremost but how do we guide those students well we do it with the teachers the teachers once they buy in on that aspect of it and we maintain the fact that we can keep those competitive teachers that are very desirable to other school districts we want them to stay here we want them to buy into any amount of change that we have okay uh, that change could be in that technology that can be redundant for me. I may say that a hundred thousand times, but I really like that. I wish I had that opportunity when I was going through school. And it's just something, it just wasn't what uh, America was or the world was at that time. It was very new. 
um, possibly even newer for Mr. Alexander, who we won't say how long he graduated ago. So, or Mr. McNeil for that, for that matter. Um, staying the same, you know, I want the teachers to stay the same, is what I want. We have phenomenal teachers, period. Not everybody agrees with teachers in general, but when it comes down to it, we in the Afton School District, from the very bottom, Miss Laura and Miss Tony more specifically that I know at the Early High Childhood Center, all the way up to a few that I know up here at the high school, would be Mr. Moiko, who has always been Coach Moiko because he coaches my son in the flag football program. Uh, he plays with his son as well. I get to know these people over this time, and I like that. I like that consistency, and it's really good for a family as well. Starting from the bottom, maintaining that consistency. I've got teachers that have had all three of my kids. They know my family. Unfortunately, my son's at the backside coming up after his sisters. I don't know, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know, that's, that's, that's the boy of the family. So uh, change in general for the buy-in, no matter what comes our way as a community, staying the same, consistency with the teachers, and then all the way up. Change this up a little bit because I'll be just piggybacking everything that they say. I mean, to be honest, so I'm going to throw it at you, okay? I mean, you asked a question and said, well, What do you want to keep? What would you like to keep in the school? I guess I like everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, is there anybody that can it's tell working. me something that they want to keep? I mean, I mean, is it teachers you like? Yeah. Is it everything in sports or all the coaches and all that? Well, what, what do you want to change? Nothing? Not really. I can't really think Nothing. of anything. Is there anybody, about somebody, that. something that they would like to see change in the school? Like the funding for the music programs uh -huh. throughout the schools, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Same thing. More influence on the fine arts program. Not just music, but also art right. and all of fine arts. Yeah, I agree. How many industrial classes there are? There's only three right now. If you want to see one, more? Two, yeah, I mean, that is one thing that we are. That's I know that is a goal. I know it's more now. It's definitely industrial classes. Industrial classes. classes. More of them. Yeah, I can see that. Now, everything you tell me, or any any three of us, you know, if we're on the school board, you can suggest everything and anything you want. I don't know if anybody, does anybody really know how the school board runs? Okay. Just to give you a little example, the school board, uh, basically the only person we can hire and fire is the superintendent. Everything else we have to make sure all the policies are in place, you know, uh, all the curriculum is in place for you guys to learn. We got the right teachers, all the technology, everything is set. That's basically what we do. Uh, but like I said, we don't hire and fire your teachers, but we can suggest and tell them. We, we will listen to everything and anything you want to tell us and try to do anything we can possibly to help and change it. And yes, we do want to change. I mean, you know, I'd like to see that change too, to be honest. Thank you. Side note, I was a drum major, marching band for four years. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Alto saxophone. Oh. I'd like to see Alto took photography for four years. Okay, next question. <coughs> Come on, you can do it. <laughs> we won't bite. We're going to switch the order this time. That's fine. Oh, come so, on. Okay. Mike was doing such a good job. Take me back in Mike. This is so for everyone. Uh, the Chromebooks have been a very significant investment. They've been a very, and they've been a very important learning tool. What other types of technology do you think we should try and invest in the school district? At different schools. That's a good one. You start with this side. Yes, sorry. All right, I'll go first. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> no, it's good. No, it's, it's, a good, it's a good question. <clears throat> it's true. I mean, how many of you like the Chromebooks? How many of you don't like them? Okay. I can, I can understand. <laughs> That's pretty bad when Tony says he don't like them either. I can understand that. I mean, I, I have a person that goes to the school, too, that tells me about them, too. Yes, he loves them when he's at home. You know, he loves them in school. As far as changing them, that's like I said, that's the thing. I know on the school board when I was on it, and also now I know when Mike is on it, the number one thing is yes, technology is like the number one thing that we want to keep going. I mean, because it, that's the real world now. Technology is where it's at. How and what, as far as I would change, as far as the computers and stuff, uh, I, I don't know. The, the problem is the budget. That's one of the biggest things is the budget. 
you know, as far as getting the right budget where it's at. And I know you were talking about the budget before. I know the budget for <coughs> next year is actually like being planned now or whatever. That's they always have to plan ahead of time. So what's there, I don't know, but I know on the school board, the technology is number one. That is one of the biggest budgets. We there. see your mic. I know mm -hmm. that is one of the number one budgets, right. the, the highest budgets that we do is have is on technology. So, um, <coughs> it's, a new, it's, a, it's a new experience for myself. I have, uh, my oldest is a sixth grader, so she just got her first Chromebook. So, uh, I'm at my home, I'm still learning about this technology. Um, a little bit of an understanding that I have about when budgets happen, um, again, through my fire district, I understand the budgets and planning ahead. It's a business. I mean, it, it is a public school system, don't get me wrong, but it is a business, okay? So, the way that I would hope that our young adults are looking at this program is you you kind of are the guinea pigs if you will okay and let me explain that maybe a little bit better you're not in some cage and we're not poking at you and trying new different things to see how long your legs can grow no we've started uh, in the Afton School District with the Chromebooks okay uh, if I had to guess uh, the Chromebooks were probably under a government uh, sort of, some sort of a government program uh, that Google offered to school systems that we had to apply for uh, I'm going to relay to Mr. Uh, McNeil and his answer. He can explain that probably a little bit better. I'm simply speculating, okay? But what we're going to be able to do as a school board, as a school district, from input from the students all the way up is that we will take the information and the opinions that have been going on to find out, has this been working? What changes need to be happening so that when it comes time to change maybe update the books, you know, are we changing from a Google-based program to the other largest competitor, which would be the Apple-based programs. I know uh, in, at my work, we're in the process of switching over to the Apple iPads. We were PC-based, but the Apple iPads are much more user-friendly for what we need them for. There's a very good chance that our school district, whoever it may be, from Dr. Brotherton all the way down, is gonna say, you know what, I think that the Apple program is gonna work a little bit better. I know it works better for arts. I know as a whole, arts, movie editing, uh, she can tell you a little bit more about that. Arts uh, in general, um, software base, it's a little bit more user friendly. So is that a possibility? Absolutely. And, you know, I've always said, you know, shoot for the stars, but never settle. So let's aim for high, let's see what we can get, but also understand, you know, we have constraints. But yeah, that's, I think that's phenomenal that we could possibly have that ability to go Apple. Um, or maybe Google's gonna outdo them once again this year. You know, I, at home I use laptops, but I have an iPhone. And I'm telling you, the two don't talk together 90% of the time, but I love them for what they are. So, you know, it just takes a little bit more time and we'll figure that out. Go ahead, Mike. All right, so yeah, the, the super brief history is on the, on the Chromebooks. Um, was that we did a big evaluation, and Tony, Tony knows the history here as well, where we actually had people looking and using the iPads with the keyboards and we had others using uh, laptops and others using Chromebooks and getting feedback. Um, and I, the consensus was, I think, and this is kind of how it's played out in K through 12 nationwide, um, iPads have settled into being used very heavily in the, you know, the K6, maybe K3 environment. Um, because of the interface, but then there's a need to create content and it's much harder to create content on an iPad than it is on a, on a laptop style device. And uh, frankly, the, in the IT industry, the, the Chromebook is the most secure platform you can buy um, because every application is sandboxed within the browser, et cetera. Now, you can't play games on it. And I imagine all those hands that went up that didn't like the Chromebooks because they can't play their games. Is that, how much of that's correct? <laughs> Anybody want to acknowledge that? Because I know most of the gripes that I know of within the community are I can't play my uh, I can't play my games, my uh, high resolution games on a Chromebook, and that's absolutely true. Um, the in terms of technology, this is this is going to be a nuance, but it's a very important point. You don't want to do technology just for technology's sake, just because it's cool. You want to do technology to enhance the learning opportunity and enhance the, the growth opportunity for the student body. And I don't care what platform it is. Yeah, I'm talking to you right now on a Chromebook Pixel. 
I have an iPad Pro. I have all kinds of Android devices, Apple devices, Microsoft devices. I, yeah, and I'm a tech weenie. The, but the bottom line is we want to pick the right tool to enhance learning at a particular level. You don't want to get married to something like I said earlier. You don't want to do it just because it's always been done that way. So uh, like Jordan said, you want to keep evaluating that and keep looking at it. But uh, the, the history of, no, we didn't, we actually didn't get through a government program. Um, we were part of a, a pilot program with Dell for the initial round of Chromebooks. And that's how we got, uh, we did get um, some lowered cost, but it was, it was very marginal, maybe 10%. It wasn't anything major, but we, so we did make the investment and it was, it was an intentional choice at the time. And, and I think it was, it's proven not to be a good choice, but. So other te oh, quick, other technology I would love to see is more of the 3D uh, fabrication. There, there's two types. There's the 3D printing, but there's also the 3D um, fabrication where you, you can add to something and build it through a printer or you can remove it from a, a, a 3D, you know, the CNC type machines that are out there. Those are pretty amazing for people to be able to play with, use, make parts for their, you know, cars or for their, uh, you know, bikes or whatever. And so there's a lot of opportunities there to, to explore and learn through using the technology. So I would like to see expansion specifically in that area, the maker spaces, et cetera. All right, Tony, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Any other questions? Do you want to? Huh? Okay. Um, you want to give your chance? Sure. Uh, class a chance. Um, so, uh, I'm Ms. Malone, and my Creative Commons arts class, which is a speech communication arts class, is here as well. And we currently are studying persuasive speaking. So it's perfect that we have the opportunity to hear candidates who are running for office. <laughs> Um, and so they have the opportunity to ask you questions, and um, I just wanted to open up the floor now from Tony's class to give my students the opportunity to ask you those questions as well. You guys do Cougar News, right? Um, I teach another class that's called TV Production okay. that does produce that's Cougar it. News, um, but this class is more of a speech communication arts class. Yeah. So take it away, guys. I bet none of you like speaking out loud, do you? <laughs> <laughs> do you like to change places? No? <laughs> Mr. Levinson, we're going to start with you. This time. Oh, okay. So be ready, please. Fantastic. <laughs> um, this is Sam. Go ahead. This is more directed to you because you mentioned it. Uh, you were talking about uh, getting colleges to, I guess, look at mid range athletes. When you say mid range athlete, do you mean the athletes that aren't, that aren't phenomenal, but they are just below it? Because I know colleges tend to look at more at the um, people who are making or breaking records or getting close to records. So when you say um, getting the colleges to look more at uh, people just under that or mid-range, do you mean the people who are, like, what do you mean by that? Okay, so I guess Mr. McNeil, yeah, yeah. this is directed to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead. I, do you want me to jump in on that, Tony? Go ahead. Yeah, that's Mike. Your... Okay. All right. So what I was referring to was, you know, I can be honest and I would say this with my kids present. Um, my kids were all in athletics from very early on and, but they weren't, you know, they weren't going to be professional athletes, but we believe as a family that it was important to have, be well-rounded, to, to explore those skills, those hand, that hand-eye coordination, that speed, um, and they played various sports. Now, the better schools all have sports programs. And I can tell you from uh, experience with a number of kids at the college level, that when you go to a tough school, it's really important to have another outlet, to have another, uh, another expression. And so, yes, I'm talking about those students who um, their focus is not gonna be sports. They're not, they're not banking on making it as a coach they're not banking it on making it as a professional sports athlete but they love sport and they're good at it and so they want to they want to move to uh, the next level and go to a good school get a good education but play basketball play football play golf 
play, you know, whatever. And, and I'll incorporate that into the fine arts space also. Be in orchestra, be in theater, be in choir. Um, it's, those are neat opportunities and they're important opportunities to be, to continue to be well-rounded. You guys are, you guys don't understand it, but you're in a really good high school. Um, you've got lots of sports opportunities, lots of fine arts opportunities, and lots of good educational opportunities. Uh, Want to see that continue at the college level. And to make that happen, you guys have to be introduced to the right people at the college level. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping to see. So does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Very excited about asking questions when we were in class. <laughs> I know I got intimidating when you walked in here and saw them, but the questions are still valid and they're still ready to answer them. Some of the questions might have been answered in already. Some of them might have been answered, but if you've yeah. got some other questions that may piggyback off of the ones that were already asked, you're welcome to ask those as well. I mean, piggybacking on mics, I know um, maybe when I went to school here, I mean, we didn't even have those really opportunities as far as going to a big school. I mean, they, they never looked at us at all. You know, and now the days, I mean, well, I mean, just your prime example, Marcus Golden, you know. I mean, look, there's the opportunities to go somewhere, you know. I'll add in on that a little bit as well, just so that Mr. McNeil and Mr. Alexander aren't by themselves. I think that it's important, you know, you're going to have – and we all know them. I mean, some of my best friends are seven feet tall, and I don't think I have to tell you, I was not at the competitive level that they were. Did I like to play the games as much as them, playing ball or whatever? And I'm, I'm going to speak on sports because it was a specific question that was answered to that. No, I didn't have that. You know, I was, I was gifted with vertical challenges as opposed to vertical ability. So I think that something that's important, and, I, and I, I think I'm speaking a little bit along the lines of what Mr. McNeil was saying is, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Division I schools that are coming in to look at our athletes. Sure, Division I will be great for that, but there are other division levels at the collegiate level from, I, you know, I went through community college, I did a little bit of time and got some stuff done at Mizzou as well, but there are other levels of college that you can play super competitively at that doesn't have to be the Mizzou's or the UCLA's or the Florida State's but you can still obtain an excellent education and still be able to do those arts that you do, be it sports. And I think that what's important is that we continue to not just bring in the UCLA's and the Florida State's and the Mizzou's, let's bring in more of the other ones. Let's bring in some of the ones like Truman State, which is just north of Columbia, where Mizzou is. They have a great sports program up there. They also have a great arts program up there. So let's, I think that from our standpoint, and Mike, I'm including you, tell me if I'm completely wrong, but we want to see more of those schools coming in for you. How do we do that? Well, we're going to work on that. We're going to, just like Mr. McNeil was saying, we need more of those other schools besides the division ones that only want to see those people that are, you know, five foot seven, like me, right? You know, that's, that's what they were looking for back then. No, they were not looking for me, you know? So it's important that we bring in a full variety of schools that everybody has an opportunity to look at with whichever direction they want to go. And, and no, on that, sorry about that. Keep going. You know, the, well, Fock, Fock, Fock Bond is one. Problem. Absolutely. Okay, that, what I, what I hate to one. see it, but we've got three or four kids right now that are in the men's volleyball league. I mean, and they're having a fantastic time and they're enjoying going to college and having a great education right now. But unfortunately, it was really weird that two or three of them did not get a scholarship <laughs> to that school. They got a higher school. You know, and then unfortunately it just didn't work out. But now they're settled where they belong, and they, they accept it, and they're getting a good education also too. But now and it's not one of the top college, you know, it's not an A one college. You know. But they're out there; they're doing fantastic. Right? Um, is Can there? You come up here, so Mr. McNeil can see you. Is there any way that you guys would like make the funding for like sports equally? Because like for some sports, I know for softball, we don't have enough pants because they're all ripped. And like other sports get new stuff and others don't. Mm -hmm. If there's any way we can make that equal. Um, Ms. I know Mr. Lowe, you don't have experience <laughs> with this, but what would you do okay. if that so, passes through? 
I'm going to speak from, from my time, okay, because I did tennis, track, I'm not good at and everything, but, you know, I did the ones that, uh, the, the sports that I chose uh, when I was in high school were the, I don't know the best way to put it, not the ones that got the most funding, let's just say, okay? So I think that the best way to approach that, uh, the way that you'll look at it from a school standpoint is, is very much like a business. Um, is that the the more popular sports tend to get like the bigger fundraising events they have the concession stands that are opened up all the time which draws in that particular money uh, the only thing that I'm not aware of I don't know how it's allocated okay so I'm just gonna speak from from what you're saying to me right now okay and this is not a slam by any means on anything that's going on it, it's hard and it, it's almost like a budget within it within itself and that goes from the arts programs to, to music as well you know you, uh, if we the marching band was competitive do we have like the fi fanciest uniforms in the world or anything like that or the buses or the greatest hats and stuff you know so with that being said I think we just need to pay a little bit closer attention is what I, it sounds like it's it sounds like that maybe uh, not necessarily that there has to be an equal cut across the board because equipment costs different as well. So for me to say, you know, in my opinion, that the softball team needs to have, and I'm just using a round number, let's say it's $100. I, it's way more. I get that. My son's in baseball. It, I wish it was $100. <laughs> so for them to say that, and then for us to say, for example, which one program that I know does tend to get a little bit more of the money and, and draws a larger crowd also as well would be our football program. Okay. So $100 to the football program is way different than $100 to the softball program, to the baseball program, uh, even beyond, let's go to the arts. It's, it's different, it's way too different. And I think that possibly what we need to do uh, and something that I would completely entertain because I'm a huge fan of sports and, and arts as well, uh, it's what got me through my high school experiences. You know, no two people are the same and, and it's incredibly important. We just need to relook at that. I think you know, speaking with the coaches, um, you know, more hands-on. Speaking with the athletic director, maybe seeing it, where the funds allocated. Did they just get misappropriated? Possibly, not to anybody's fault by any means. But we just need to look at how they're going. Maybe closer is what I would say. You did it on the book. <laughs> you sorry, Alexander. You did. He did. There, there is a couple other places that you can go to and then I don't know if anybody ever directed you and like you said the budgets are set different budgets each class gets this every sport gets this but you can go to the parents club I don't know if anybody I know can you think of her name who's the softball coach um coach Utah How about higher that is the head that coach called Utah. oh she's a varsity Yes, he is. Oh, that's right. She, oh, okay. that's right. Myers is. I'm talking about Myers. Erica. Myers, the. So Erica knows how to. They knew how. To, all they do is just write the letter to the parents club, and the parents club. That's what they're there for. We, we will give out funds to different groups that need stuff like that, you know. But unfortunately, there are budgets that are set. But like you said, you know, I mean, because we've offered Erica and them to work the concession stand to make money for yeah. stuff like that. So. Yeah. Mr. McNeil. Yeah, I think it's important that that be driven up that those needs be driven up through the athletic department and it's very important that we hold the athletic department accountable to have all the sports on a rotation to be getting new jerseys to be keeping those things up because i in my mind there when um you know my son played with marcus a little bit he got hurt by marcus a lot and uh <laughs> It was that those those athletes are just as valuable as those kids that were going out and playing golf. And so we want to, you know, like Jordan mentioned, it's not the same for every sport, but we need to make sure that we're not that our, that our equipment needs are, are not keeping us from actually being able to participate and participate at, a, at the level that a student is capable of. That's what I see it as a, as a get out of the way. In software design, we call it reducing the user friction. So in this case, we wanna reduce the friction between the athlete and their ability to perform. And so I, that obviously always needs to be looked at and you know, it's, it's hard to second guess a decision based on, on one, one point of input, but I think it's really important that we hold the organization accountable to be treating those sports that might not be at the front front of the list um, with the same level of importance because it is about the students. It's not about the sport. And 
I want to add to that too. Um, being a coach of a more a sport that gets more attention. Um, for example, football's got like 60 players, so obviously they're gonna get more money because we have more players spent for uniform. And also, since we have 60 players, we can raise money more as far as fundraising. Compare that to, I don't know, golf team with 10 players. Yeah. So that could make a difference too. But oh, yeah. we do agree that it should be equally in rotation yeah. again. At least you are, I mean, to be honest, at least there are things you are getting as far as fundraising. I mean, how many of, how many of you know we do have roller hockey teams? Okay. Well, of course you play. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they're not recognized as a school sport. So they don't get uniforms. They don't get that. They have, we have to actually go buy it almost every year, buy uniforms every year. So basically, they're fundraising every year. And it gets monotonous, but I mean, but if they want to play the sport, and actually right now, we've got more kids playing now than we did three years ago. We only had like one or, one or maybe one and a half teams. Now we have three teams. We have a junior high, a C team, and a varsity team, which we've never had. So getting bigger. Did that kind of at least guide you a little bit better? Any other? I didn't know if we could go back. Go, yeah, okay. go ahead. <laughs> Double dipping. <though>. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know you guys all talked about the Project Legal Aid program, like the engineering and the stuff like that. But how exactly are we going to get the kids to be involved? I know you guys like it. But I feel like there's not as many kids involved with it as there could be. And I guess it's starting at the middle school, but how exactly are we going to get more kids to be involved with that if we like it so much? Good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> well, I mean, it all starts with the teachers, to be honest. I mean, that's where they need to be teaching, especially well, it has to be pushed at the middle school, you know. And getting those teachers to push it, you know, that's something I guess maybe we might have to look at, you know, so that they know it. I know when they're graduating, you know, when they have to sign up for your high school classes, they're there, you know, and I guess maybe actually the counselors also is the other part that need to push and get into it and say, hey, you know, this is, uh, that's where it needs to come from as far as I know. How about let's go to uh, Mr. McNeil this time. Okay. So yeah, I'll jump in here. I see Marilyn back there grinning. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, this might be, this just might be a small passion of mine being an engineer and yeah, I've got a son who's an engineer and a father and a grandfather and yeah, we're all that way. The, um, the key <laughs> is starting young and I think we're doing that. I, I love what we're seeing with the, what I see at Manier where the kids are starting at a young age. Um, that is gonna be really important. It doesn't affect things now I mean, you guys have to understand, it's a 20-year cycle. When kids get started at the Early Childhood Center, they're not going to be sitting in your seat for many, many, many years. And so it's important to get that right all the way through the program. Uh, the, there, are, there are deficiencies in your education that are from an earlier level that we're trying to recover at the high school level. I'm just being plain. Um, we, I still think you go to an outstanding school, you have an outstanding education. But you've got to get that, you've got to have that at all levels. So doing that at all levels is important. I think another piece where we might fall down is that we might not have enough interaction between you and people out here in the industry. Um, I, I would love to make connections with some of the, you know, my, my, my small little company has been in, we've done training at Apple. We've done it at American Express. We're at the Berkeley Research Lab, which if you look, is one of the top research labs in the country. I'm out here at the Engineering Research Lab at Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche. And I, you know, we've been all over the world doing this, the, at, at Sony, uh, you get you know, a list of the, it's the who's who of uh, the industry. I had lunch with a, a manager of a department at Google on Monday. It's making those connections and giving you those insights into what's possible I think are, are maybe what's lacking in our program. Um, and I know there's been efforts to do that, but I think there, I think we can bridge because I'm not the only one in the industry in our community. There are lots of others that have connections into some pretty amazing places. And, uh, and I, I'd like to see those connections be made. And, and I don't want it to shortchange. It, 
let's be real clear. Um, just because you know, engineering at the places that I talked about can be really sexy does not mean that there aren't some amazing careers that are available to us, you know, even in our community. I live in Afton. I love my job. I know Jordan lives in Afton. He loves his job. I love that he loves his job because he hauled me out of my bedroom when my back went out two years ago. So it, it's really, it, you know, there's some, there's some amazing things that can be done at all levels and it doesn't have to be the big, the big sexy stuff, but it can be, it, it's, there are a lot of opportunities. And if we get access into our community and get those leaders that are in the industry to come into the schools, I think we could improve that interaction. I'll shut up now. <laughs> okay. Um, I think like any program, Project Lead the Way, uh, it had a starting point. Okay. So where, where was the decision to start the program? I believe that the emphasis was maybe put a little bit further down the, the ladder from you guys. And, you know, you can't help but feel like, oh, great, this sounds like a great program, but now I'm graduating in, let's say, from a freshman standpoint in four years, maybe I'm not going to be able to take the most advantage of that. There is nothing personal when it comes to that. It's unfortunate that every program needs a starting point and a guiding point. And the reason why I say that is because, uh, uh, I'll speak for my family who's in the after school district, my son, who is eight years old, uh, he's a second grader, I had to think about that. Uh, he's a second grader and he's doing Project Lead the Way as a second grader. Now his experience in Project, and he just recently went to, I believe it was Florissant, um, with the second graders, he's in Mrs. Pluff's class right now, and they, he was chosen to kind of go through that those levels. So my son's experience and say your experience are going to be worlds apart. It's it's unfortunate, but it is going to be that way. Um, so how do we get better uh, involvement with that? Uh, just like uh, what Mr. McNeil was saying, you know, we need to possibly get more buy-in from you know the uh, the engineers. Did you know I'm an engineer? I'm not an engineer like him. I drive a fire truck, but my title is engineer. So we're kind of the same, Mike. We're kind of the same, but it's two completely, completely different fields, okay? So I know you were saying earlier, maybe a little bit more uh, emphasis on the industrial trades programs. Phenomenal, you know? It do, does it have to be the, as to use uh, Mr. McNeil's words, does it have to be that sexy job of Google where you sit in those nap machines, which by the way, look amazing. Isn't that Google that has those nap? It, yeah. I got a couple of people know what I'm talking about. I want one. I don't. Maybe we can get those for the school. I don't know. You know. So, but you know, it, it needs to be across the boards. Okay. I am not myself a four-year college degree person. I'm an associate's degree. That's what worked for me. I'm not my two brothers, who I have an older brother who works for the Onion. Do you guys know what the Onion is? Mm -hmm. It's a satire magazine or newsprint. He's one of their uh, web designers in Chicago four-year degree with a master's. My younger brother works for the Abrams Company, which is a publishing company in New York City. He's a senior editor for them, also working towards getting a better degree than his bachelor's. I came from the same upbringing, we went through the same school system, but we're not the same people. So it's important that we make sure that from the top of the Googles and, and the whatever that may be, all the way down to, I'll put it to myself, who wants to be a fireman? Who wants to be a paramedic? And make those differences. I met Mike before I even really met Mike, you know, but it's interacting, and that's what we like to see, that all those are covered in there. So thank you. I hope I have answer. I, I talk a lot. So. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a break from the students. I have a question to ask. Can you see me, Mike? Can you see my bright shirt? No. Uh-oh. I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> well, by the way, I do have a sexy job. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, here's my, actually this is not my question, it's a question from another teacher. Miss Whitehead want to ask this question. Um, <laughs> could you guys, if you're elected or re-elected, could you forgive that day coming back after Memorial Day so we don't have to go to school that day? Is that within your power and the board? <laughs> I don't want to put you guys in a spot, but I'm just asking. It looks like you're asking you Mike, to so let's go ahead and start with Mike on that one. Mr. McNeil, do you have that power? I love, I, I love the idea. Um, but yeah, we yeah, calendar is a struggle. I, I don't even know how to even address it more than that. Calendar is such a struggle. and uh, But I think, yes, I, I hear you looking at things and 
and making some choices that would really help our staff and our families. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I'm in agreement with you. I'm one, right now I'm one voice of seven and uh, depending on what happens next Tuesday, I might be no voice, but the, uh, it's, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly something that should be considered. I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. You want to be efficient and give those family opportunities. I know you have small kids and you want to spend time with them too. And that's important. <laughs> All right, how about... <laughs> Would you agree with Mr. I, I, I got to say, I mean, again, I told you earlier, you know, my dad taught for the Webster Girls School District for 35 years. I'm a product of that teacher's parent education. I, all I knew was teachers growing up. I went to parties at the principal's house when I had been in his office not even a week before, you know, I mean, it was, it was awkward. Maybe that might be why I am the way that I am and allowing Coach Moiko to teach my son. So, but yeah, I, it, I mean, you know, okay. of course, come well, on. I applaud to you. Anytime I go out, you know, and I meet a teacher at different events and stuff like that, I, I applaud them I mean, because they do fantastic jobs. So we got at least two votes. <laughs> <laughs> Work on others. <laughs> yeah. um, but my real question, you guys, all three of you said something about keeping effective teachers Absolutely. in the district. Absolutely. Um, you know, we do have um, good teachers, especially in this building. So I want to know your specific plans of how to do that so they don't go somewhere else. Um, so we start with you, Mr. Alexander, this time. <laughs> well, I mean. What keeps you here, Tony? What keeps me here are the students. That's good. That's good. You know, and that's that's what we want to like, and that's what I like. Is I want to see the teachers that like to teach for the students, not for money. Should I say? But I know there are some teachers that would go different places for money, not for the students. And that's why we want to try and keep these teachers that really want to stay here to teach these kids. You know what they need to learn within their four years that are here and get you ready for the real world out there. Um, and hopefully that we can do that on a new board. I mean, because I know you're, I think as of right now, the um, negotiations are going on for the teacher salaries. Yes. You know, and that's, it takes a while and that's a struggle. I've been on that before. And getting them the right salary, hopefully will keep them here, you know, and want to still stay here and hopefully want to stay here for you and not just for the money. Okay. So it's this is an interesting uh, question. Uh, I wish we had more teachers in here. I, I really do. Um, and I know word of mouth would be phenomenal. But also from, from our young adults who are sitting in this room right here who are coming up on voting age or may even be voting age, you need to keep this, this, this is actually a really, really good question, okay? And, and I'm hoping that I can get the answer out because this is actually something very close to me being the product of a teacher's salary, if you will, in, in the household. Um, I, I know it, I mean, I do, I'll speak to the teachers. I understand that, uh, you know, of course you do this for the kids. I don't know of any teacher, I mean, literally, even the ones that still wanna go for the higher paid jobs, it is still for the kids, okay? This is not this glory job like some people have running into burning buildings, you know, and whatnot. No, it's better than that. I'm actually a certified uh, fire service level one instructor. I mean, that's how much I enjoy it myself. I teach fire service classes to my peers uh, to better that. Um, man, it's hard. That is a hard thing because I'm of the frame of thought that our pay spectrum, and you know, quote me on this, is completely askew, okay? Entertainers, God love them, athletes, God love them, should not be at the top of our pay scale, I'm sorry. That, that is my personal thought, because what is the one common denominator that those actors and those athletes had to get through to come to where they're at? And it's a teacher. I don't care if it was the greatest teacher in the world, or if it was one that was looking for a better, even they are really good. They really are. Family, you don't know necessarily why that teacher's going for that higher paying job. They have a family to take care of, okay? I mean, you know, I was fortunate, you know, that my dad was able to stay with the school district that he was with, and my mom was the school nurse for the school district as well, that that worked for our family, but that doesn't always work. So to maybe answer your question, I know I'm kind of 
skating just a little bit, but um, I would have to look at the budget, number one, number one. You keep teachers by making sure that you have competitive rates and competitive salaries. Um, I'm in the contract negotiations at my fire district right now, so I understand that aspect of it as well from, from both sides. Uh, so that's an important thing to also understand. Sometimes though, um, because you have to be point blank honest and I, I'm asking for votes to put me into that position where I can see it at a little bit better perspective, it may not necessarily be the actual financial uh, aspect of it. And again, this was also speaking with my father. It's, it's a factor, don't get me wrong. We have families to raise and you wanna be productive members of the society. Is it also what are my teachers needing and am I providing that for them? Are the citizens approving that so that all these teachers have the actual abilities to do their jobs easier and to the fullest ability? So there's two spectrums of that. I want to see the teachers above actors and, and I mean it's not realistic but that's how I believe uh, wholeheartedly but then I also want to make sure that if those teachers and Mr. Moiko is standing right here in front of me Miss Malone as well do we have and I, I actually sorry Mr. Moiko I'm gonna to go to Miss Malone who does not have a mic stand to hold her boom in the room available right now now you may have just left it I understand that I, okay so I mean but do you see what I'm saying like that's a factor for me that's a factor because Miss Malone would have been able to set that up two seconds flat. So are my teachers having enough of the tools that they need and are they getting a competitive wage? I mean, that's that's big time. That's how you keep them. Kids are already great. I, in my opinion, our kids are already great, but I don't teach them, you know? What my experiences with the kids are phenomenal and that's why our teachers stay, but let's keep them here with good rates and salaries. Mr. McNeil. Yeah, I'd like to go back. Tony, can I, uh, can I mention the situation when your wife left? Yes. Okay. Um, a perfect example, um, it, when I got on the board nine years ago, uh, the, the climate in the district from a teacher a relationship with administration, it was, it, was, it, it was bad. It was really rough. Um, and I had to, you know, I was, I'm kind of a quiet person, believe it or not, depending on this, uh, based on what you're hearing this morning. But I was doing a lot of coming on the board, kind of saying things like Jordan saying that, I don't know what's going on here. I need to learn. I need to understand what's going on in the district. And I, I absorbed a ton of angst that wasn't, it was directed at me, but it wasn't necessarily directed at me. It was built up and pent up because the climate had gotten so bad in the district. Um, and there were things that, that were going on and, and changes were being made. And if I have any regret it's that we didn't, the couple of us that knew things were bad when we got on the board, we didn't speak up soon enough. Now we've spoken up since, and others have spoken up since, and we've had the opportunity to have dialogue and have exchange and stop the bleeding. But I remember it just, I, you, Tony, you could ask my wife, it just broke my heart when your wife left, like two days before we were able to make a decision that probably would have changed her mind. I think it was I think it was literally two days and it was just the timing was bad um, but what I can tell you I learned from that is there's an urgency you have to make sure that you're doing things the right way all the way through you have to make sure that people are being heard you have to make sure that they're not being shut down and they're not being they're not getting retribution for speaking up on topics that need to be discussed which was going on also. I had to I had to write a letter of apology to a couple of the teachers that are still there at the high school. I won't call them out because I know that they were receiving consequences for having spoken up and, and they were being treated badly. And that's just wrong. And so I think we've improved the climate and the culture quite a bit, but that is something that can turn sour very quickly. And you guys that are in sports know that the, the uh, the chemistry of a team can turn sour on a dime um, with a division. And so we need to be vigilant, vigilant. we need to be diligent. I got those words mixed up for those that are doing the public speaking thing. And we have to, we have to pay attention and we have to listen and, uh, and not get complacent. Um, now on top of that, we need to, I'll be blunt, we need to continue to improve the, the, the salaries of the teachers. We've gotten everybody up to average. But my goal isn't average. 
I don't want our teachers to just be average. I want our teachers to, to be moving forward. To do that, we are gonna have to go back to the public for some additional funding. And in order to do that, we need to all be together on the same page. Um, I would love to see the district move forward with some sort of uh, an effort to um, go either with a bond issue or a small tax increase that would that would help us to improve that situation and do it together with the staff, do it together with the students and the families so that everybody understands the great things that we're doing at Afton and we can press that forward. So Tony, I hope that didn't feel like a non-answer, but I was trying to be very blunt with where we've been and, and where we are today, because I know these students don't have that perspective. No, thank you, you answered my question. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> um, What'd you say? I said thank you, you said answered thank my you. question. <laughs> You answer my question. Good. All right. Um, we got about five more minutes, so I'm going to. Can gonna I say something real quick? Sure, sure. sure. I, I want to apologize to all of you for not getting up and getting down, unfortunately, because I'm really not supposed to. Because a week ago today, I was actually in my test. I was on an operating table, and I was getting my mm -hmm. heart worked on, and I was there on the table actually seven hours. I mean, I have a good heart, but I have a bad heart, which is actually being fixed. So. I apologize for not getting up in that. We got five minutes. Guys. Okay, so um, we're just going to close with a closing remark. Anything else that you think that we did not answer or you want to add? Um, again, um, they're going to be their, the messengers for their parents. And uh, my class, they can vote. So uh, yep. you're speaking to a voter's right there, too. Well, and I do want to let you know that we will be posting this on Cougar News' Facebook page, yep. which does, is a public Facebook page that does go out to all of um, the active community. So just wanted to let you know you are reaching, you are reaching the public. Yeah, do we look okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Levinson, you want to start? Sure. Just yeah. something short and to finish this. Something short. Yeah. My whole life. <laughs> um, I... This, this is actually more nervous to me than the community forum that we had uh, the other night where the three of us sat down and we spoke to the, uh, to the parents club uh, was formed, it did the forum and there was other community members and they had cupcakes and stuff and it was nice. But I gotta I got say this was more nervous to me because um, you know, you are the reason why I have chosen myself to make an attempt to join the school board. Um, here, <coughs> but speaking with you guys is it, it hits more to home than anything. I would love to see maybe even a better network where you know. Do you guys? I know there's my daughter is on the student council down in uh, at Rogers um, that we could possibly introduce whether whoever it is we need to possibly introduce a direct line from the student council through the ranks, if it's be of the principal or even possibly directly to the school board. Because these concerns that you guys bring about are why we're doing what we're doing. You know, because there may have been a shortfall in, in the pants that have gotten ripped over the years. Or uh, from my experience in music, you know, maybe the instruments, you know, are not the ones that you borrow from the school are, are not up to par, uniforms included. Um, whatever industrial arts I know uh, from inspecting the building and my job that the uh, the room with all the hard wood floor blocks and stuff what is that the wood shop or whatever that was um, is not the wood shop anymore or is no, it is or did wood. it change or yeah. some I don't know I know we came in and I was like it doesn't seem like it's the same regardless there were little houses being built in the back we need to emphasize that stuff okay we have to and the feedback from you guys and the fact that you actually care to come and and ask us these questions that speaks loudly. And I'm gonna take that to heart, no matter what. Whether I'm a member of this board or not, I choose to, as a parent in this community of kids in the school system, I can talk to Mr. Alexander if he's the one that's been chosen on board. I can talk to Mr. McNeil, I know the school board. And I will be more than happy, my firehouse is just down the road on Valcor, that's where I'm at. 48 hours every four days, I'm down there. Please come by. I can talk to these people if you're not of the comfort level to do that and be that voice. They could help me inc increase my involvement. So I want to thank you. I want to thank Mr. Moiko, Ms. Malone, everybody who is here, Ms. Allen, everybody who was able to help us come and speak with you guys. I was actually really excited, very nervous, but very excited. So thank you guys. I also, if you would like, I have some printouts, if you guys want to bring them just to have as a reference, uh, 
I don't have a lot. I you know made them at home, and I'm not very computer savvy. Could have used that technology back when I was in school. <laughs> so, um, but if you guys are interested, I have that. And thank you guys. Thank you. I know young voters and future voters. Thank you guys. This is awesome. Let's change that April election low turnout. That's for sure. Mr. McNeil. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. We're going to turn up your... Go I ahead, sir. I unplugged your mic. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Sir. All right. Um, I just want to thank you guys for taking the time on uh, coordinating with me to be able to join you remotely. This is a great use of technology, and I'm excited that we're using it and using it for a positive purpose. Um, I, I just want to emphasize I was accused of... Uh, turning the current the candidate forum that we had a couple weeks ago into a love fest but the but the <laughs> honest answer is you don't have any bad choices up here and i'm excited because the district isn't at risk there have been times in elections in the past where people had agendas and i was very concerned um but that's just not the case and i and my my measure is the same thing that i've learned to use as a measure for teachers as a measure for administrators is are, is the board member a good, is, are they good for kids? And is that their priority? Is that the reason they're there? Or they, do they have another agenda? And I think you've got a board right now where to a person, they are very much for kids. And I think this group is as well. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about that possibility. Um, and looking forward to, you know, continuing on on the board. And if not, then I know the board's gonna be just fine. So I know that doesn't sound like a typical political speech, but it's the truth. And I think that's a testament to our community. Thank you. Mr. Alexander. Well, first of all, I'll just pick it up and everybody, everybody say thank you, Tony. Thank you for putting this together. Uh, I want to thank all you kids for putting your questions together. They were good, well thought out. I mean, maybe Tony helped you with them, but that's you know, all right, either way. If they were from your heart, that was great. That's fantastic. I mean, it's something we needed to hear. Uh, also, thank you for taking care of this, too. Uh, like it says on my slogan, it says, working for your child's education. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, is work for you guys to get the right education, have the right teachers, and all that stuff through here. Um, I had a good closing that last time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Very good. But uh, I appreciate everything. Right. Uh, give me 30 seconds. I just want you guys to thank the candidates running because let me tell you, this is a volunteer job. It takes a lot of time and energy, okay, um, for them to do this, and they're not getting paid for this, and they have to attend many, many boring meetings. <laughs> okay, and please give in. Thank you, Mike. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Have a good Yes, yes, I think we were already talking about that. Okay, okay. I know Chief has been, but yes. we would love for you to come. Absolutely. And then I'm going to put you in touch with Jan. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, you know, I try. <laughs> no, we appreciate